Hello everyone, I hope you are ready for this. We're going to be looking at some creepy tales again, and this time it's from my homeland of Britain. It's a place with a lot of history, dating back thousands of years, so it makes sense that there would be a lot of scary stories attached to certain places. Which one of these will send a shiver down your spine? Let's find out. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the Top 10 Scary British Urban Legends. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Corpse Train. Now, According to London folklore, in the early 1900s there was a train that ran underneath the city and it was only for dead people. Back then, London's hospitals and morgues were struggling to deal with the vast amount of people that were dying from poverty and disease. They decided to transport the bodies out of the city, but knew that they couldn't do it overground without disturbing a lot of people. So they used an existing train line to load the bodies onto. The train ran just the other side of a wall from the normal daily service, where unsuspecting Londoners were getting on and off their trains, unaware of the nearby bodies. Next up at number 9 now, we have the Suicide Pool. This one comes from Epping Forest near Essex. The story goes that years ago, a young couple in love were followed to a pond in the forest by the girl's father. When the couple finally embraced, the father leapt from the trees to confront the boy. The fight got out of hand and the father ended up killing the boy in a rage at the edge of the pool. The waters then turned black. Wildlife that was touching the water died instantly. In the years that followed, bodies started to appear in the water. First it was an old woman, then a young one with her young child beside her. They say the pool drew them into their death and that the pool is still out there in the forest somewhere waiting for its next victim. Next up at number 8 now we have Annie. This one comes from Edinburgh, Scotland. In the old town there lies a street known as Mary King's Close. It's steeped in myths and legends of hauntings and murders. In 1990, a psychic called Aiko Gibo visited and felt a small hand touch hers. She said that she then made contact with the spirit of a dead child called Annie who had died in a plague hundreds of years years ago and had lost her doll. The psychic then went to a nearby shop and brought back a Barbie doll for her. Now since then, visitors leave dolls for Annie and a mountain of them has built up in the dark. Moving on to number 7 now, we have the Faceless Woman. This one comes from the borough of Barking in London. There you can find Beacon Tree Station, home to the Faceless Woman. The most famous sighting of her happened in 1992. A station supervisor reported that on one night, he heard the handle of his office door rattle. Outside on the platform stood a woman. She had blonde hair, she wore a very pale dress and just stared into the distance. The supervisor approached her, but as he reached out, she turned to him only to reveal she had no face. Just darkness where there should be one. Local ghost hunters claim that she is the victim of a train crash that happened there in 1958 which killed 10 people. At number 6 now we have The Beast. England's Hackney Marshes is known for its sprawling woodland and boggy reed marshes often covered in swirling fog, the perfect setting for this urban legend. The story goes that in 1980, two bear carcasses were found in the river. They had been decapitated. People started speculating about who or what could cut a bear's head clean off its shoulders. Shoulders. Then a year later, four boys were taking a walk along the marsh one winter morning when they saw it through the trees. They described it as a giant, great, growling, hairy thing. As soon as it saw them, it reared up on its back legs and let out a deafening roar. The boys ran, but the story remains always in the back of people's minds as they trudge through the marsh. We're returning now to the London Underground for our number 5 with The Crying Girl. On November 18th, 1987, a match was dropped on an escalator at London's King. Cross Station. A fire quickly spread into the nearby ticket office, which resulted in the death of 31 people. In the years since then, passengers have reported seeing a girl who died around the station. She has long brown hair, wears jeans and a t-shirt, and is always crying. Some people have even reported hearing her sobs while smelling smoke coming out from the escalators. Back to Scotland now for our number 4 with Sawney Bean. This is the gruesome tale of Alexander Sawney Bean, a man who was said to be the head of a Scottish clan of cannibals in medieval times. According to legend, the group was made up of his wife, their 14 children and 32 grandchildren, some of whom were born through incest. They lived in a cave by the water and would ambush people on the road at night. They would bring their bodies back to the cave to then dismember and eat them. Any leftovers were pickled in a jar for later. When King James VI of Scotland eventually heard of these murders, he led a manhunt to capture them. The clan was caught and then executed. Some people say you can still find the cave along the bench 
Benane Head area of Scotland. Moving on to number three now, we have Cane Hill. Some say this is one of the most haunted places in England. It was a mental asylum for over a hundred years, from 1882 to 1991. It built up a reputation for abandoning some of its patients, hiding them away from the public eye, and never truly helping them. Some people say the patients who died left their energy behind there because of their tortured lives. The building was gutted by a mysterious fire in 2010. Perhaps the scariest stories of all are of the faces appearing by the burnt out windows. Next up at number two now, we have the House of the Screaming Skull. This one comes from Bettiscombe Manor in Dorset, England. The legend goes that in 1830, a man lived there called John Frederick Pinney. He had a slave that he had brought back from the Caribbean island of Nevis. The man became ill, and on his deathbed, he swore he would never rest unless his body was returned home to Nevis. Pinney refused to pay for that expense, and when he died, he had the man buried in the local graveyard. After that, ill fortune began to plague the village for months. Screams and cries were heard from the cemetery. At the manor house, windows rattled and doors kept slamming. The body was dug up and brought to the manor house, where today only the skull remains, where it's said to haunt the manor, but the village remains safe. And finally, at number one now, we have the Hellhounds. Dartmoor is a vast, rocky, windy, and mysterious part of England. It's popular among tourists, but everyone who goes there is aware of the legend of the Hellhounds. It's said that a pack of these ghost dogs wanders the moors at night, preying on sheep, and they're not afraid of humans. They've often been described as cat-like, but with the frame of a bear, and very fast. There have been pictures and film taken of them over the years that claim to show glimpses of these hellhounds in action. Many of the locals don't even need that though. They've heard the stories handed down from generation to generation. Some of them even say they've seen the hounds with their own two eyes. Ah. <sighs> Great stories. I want to talk about more of them, but next time I want them to be from other countries. We've done a few of them now, but there's plenty more countries out there. Where are you guys from? Does your country have some scary stories that I might like? Let me know. I'm Danny Burke. Thank you, as always, for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>